Good looking shot right here. On the green, and a chance for birdie. This is a cross country special. I haven't lost him anything. Pretty good stroke right there, just to hit it through the break. Well, it's a sort of distance. If it goes in, it's a bonus. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Close. Well, there's an opportunity wasted. Just knock it in for a par and let's forget about this one. Um, golf is not about perfect, but it's going to hurt the course. Ooh, good effort right there. Almost made it. Just five feet left. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Frank, you think about the great putters of all time. I, I think the one name that generally jumps up with golf aficionados is Ben Crenshaw. And he learned to play and to putt from his beloved longtime instructor, Harvey Peenick who taught Ben and Tom Kite and some others to play from, as he said it, from the cup backwards. You know, everybody loves power. We all like to drive it a long ways. But Harvey stressed the importance of the little shots. And obviously, it paid off with Ben Crenshaw. Nice par to remain three under. Just a tap in to finish the hole. Did the job right there. Just a superb performance on the front side. He's hoping to keep it going here on the back nine, Frank. The game is so much easier when you're swinging well, putts are going in. Really, you've just got to keep out of your own way. That's a good spot right there. Center cut. 
Frank, you think about the great rivalries in sports, the Yankees and the Red Sox, Ollie and Frazier, and in golf, Nicholas and Palmer. Great athletes, great teams pushing one another to great heights. It's amazing how that's gone forward, too, because Nicholas and Palmer really became Nicholas and Watson. Then there was, like, Norman Feldo, but some would say that Feldo by Asteris. Six majors to five was even more important, but in this era that we're in now, I think we're all praying for that Woods-McElroy rivalry. Um, you know, Woods with 14 majors, McElroy already with four. That really is one to celebrate over. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. This is a good looking shot. Early part of this back nine and a good approach shot. And I will have this for birdie. All right, Frank, what's the best way to approach the tenth? This is probably the flattest green on the golf course, Rich, and, and really, um, if you miss this green, you've made a mistake. There's no two ways about it. It's probably the, the most predictable second shot you're going to have on the golf course. Frank, it appears as though this approach shot here at the 10th is fairly straightforward. It is. You've got a flat green, so you're not really worrying about mounds or bounces here. And really, this is, uh, you know, with a short iron in hand, this is one of those ones you just uh, green light, you go straight at the flag here. thought he made that. Good try, just didn't quite read the break, Frank. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, you'd think, cleaning up here for par. Just a couple of feet. Well done, and three under for the day. This would be nice, a birdie on the car, see if he can make it. And he has it for birdie. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. Eight is not enough. That is eight under par with that birdie. Four under on the day. Now on to the 11th, and Frank, we are looking at a long par four in front of us. We are indeed, and it's called shadows, but there is love in the shadows here. Hit it over that dune down there in the middle of fairway. If you can get it there around the 300 plus yard mark, then the hole obviously starts to get a little easier. Um, that second shot, you'd like to hit a little bit of a cut in here, but uh, there's two levels to this green, so make sure you're on the right level where that flag is. Good strike, good lie, good chance to attack the pin. Fine. 
Excellent looking shot here. That's been the story of the day, hacking it out of the rough. We have grass stains on the shoes coming in. Rich, do you think we should tell him this fairway out there? Yeah, he's been in the rough all day long. You haven't been in the rough all day long. Second yeah. shot coming out of the rough here. <laughs> he makes you do what? <laughs> you punched yourself. She was probably mean that. She was probably just trying to play with you. She didn't mean it right. Stop crying. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It kind of really is funny. It really is kind of funny. <laughs> I know what she did. Yeah, yeah. Jumping at his hand, playing on his hand. Okay. Frank did the prudent thing there, didn't he? Yeah, in the end, really, you could have turned that into a disaster instead. So a good chance, really, to uh, perhaps get away with par. I didn't mean to do it, Ryan, she's just a car. Early part of this second nine, a good approach shot. Now, pretty good chance for birdie. The 11th hole, Frank, what's the right way to get at it? Just got to be cognizant of that ridge that cuts through the middle of this green, that sort of turns this green into one simple green and all these little complex sort of sections. That's the biggest thing, but that's also, you realize very, very quickly, you're playing Lynx golf today. I'm going to get that to mom. I'll see my table in my tent. I've got enough. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. That's a head scratcher. No other way to put it. That close to the green and misses it badly to the right. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. Well, that would have been a bonus had it gone in, but still, reasonable chance for par here. Yeah, there's no damage. You're not going to birdie every hole. Where Are you kidding me? He you just missed that. I cannot believe that. That was such a short putt. It was a straight run. There's no fucking car. These putts keep the round together. He'll take par and move on. 
So a tester from four feet. Three under on the day. Continues to amaze yet another birdie, and what a day it's been. So just a formality here. Doing what needs to be done. You need to make them from that distance. Measuring 311 yards, the 12th Frank seems to offer an opportunity for a player to do something pretty dramatic here. Yeah, it's called the narrows. Really, it should be called the temptation because what player stands on a tee knowing he can reach and doesn't take up the ground? This one looks like it's headed right for the middle of the dance floor, Frank. Rather nice shot, I would say. That is an excellent play right there. The approach giving him another good look. the center of the club face. This has a chance to be close. Yeah. That is massive off the tee. Meters, yards, I don't care how you measure that. That's got to be what? 300 meters, 325 yards, something like that. Well, Frank, the player had a go at this, didn't quite knock it on, so what's left? Well, you can see why it's a drivable par four, because all the problems really are around the green, all these slopes and mounds and undulations. So you've got to, you've got to choose the shot that you want to play and obviously the, the shot that you're going to chip with. Everybody normally just grabs a lob wedge. There's a lot of different ways to play these shots around the greens. Now, you piece of shit. That is a tremendous shot right there. Touch and nerve. He had it all, and he has the bottom of the barrel. for his birdie. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Of what? For five pounds? So they'll tap in. You're on about like maybe a bit more expensive than five pounds. Well, there's an impressive, and then there's mind-boggling. We're at mind-boggling now. Ten under par. Now at the 13th hole here at Chambers Bay and Frank, this one bends to the right, par four. It doesn't mean that you have to cut it or move the ball in that direction. Uh, ideally, really anything down the left side of the fairway would, uh, would be well suited for this hole. There is a central bunker that sort of protects the front middle of this green. 
Um, you can go in left, left of that, or right of that, uh, but this is a beefy par four. Uh, four on the card, and you are not losing ground. Frank, this is a way to make golf easy when you can hit it that deep. Oh, I'm going to say, I know that first number's a three. I'm guessing the second one's a two. Let's call it 320. Clean this, trying to get it done. Wait for the key after that. Just destroyed it. He's going to try and rip the cover off it. I'm just going to try it set off here. Beautiful swing, and the result is every bit as good. Pretty good drive here. Another straight one. That. That's the equivalent of a 98 mile per hour fastball in baseball. This one just smoked 325 yards. That's well played. Now a good look at birdie. Frank, what's the best way to get at the 13th here? Avoid those ridges left and right, or their mounds, should I say. Um, that bunker that's well placed in the front of the green, obviously you've got to carry that, but uh, this one you've really got to keep it in line with the middle of the green. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Just when you think you're gonna make birdie, now have to really concentrate on this and at least make par. It's no snack though. Maybe lifted right there, just sort of peaked. Not a gimme, but well within his range. Seriously? Well, that was a little bizarre right there. I didn't expect that. This is an 11 foot putt. For such a strong man, weak putt. Now I'll have to make oh, this just to out. avoid making Shit. Michael Dublé for the par. Let's 
Frank, you hear it so often. This is a game of dealing with your miscues. That's the beauty of this game of golf. Uh, it giveth and it taketh away. Just singes the edge, Frank. Yeah, but at least he's burning the edges. You know you're hitting good parts. Well, we trophy then. Why? Well, the great hits just keep coming. Moves to minus 11 on the day. Minus three now for the round. Just a little tap in here. So not his best work. He'll walk away with a bogey. He's made it. Frank, now to the 14th hole, and this is the fifth consecutive par four here at Chambers Bay, and by this point, the players will know whether they're on their game or off their game. At 546 yards, uh, this hole can be shortened considerably if you choose to take a brave line down the left side. You can chew off as much as 70 or 80 yards. But once again here, because the hole bends to the left, you've really got to know which direction that wind is coming from. Always makes the hole easier, playing it from the fairway. He makes a great pass to the golf. Powerful, but it's rhythmic at the same time. I mean, that is a monster hit right there. He carried that more than 350 yards. Uh, there is fairway out there. There is. <laughs> he can't find it, though. Fucking yeah, dude. What do you think that is, you piece of shit? Good lie in the fairway, but a good chance to make something happen here. Job. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. Here's to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. Second shot. Frank, what do you want to do with the approach here at the 14th? Um, just use that, uh, you know, the mounding that's sort of supplied there in front of you, the, the right side of the screen, maybe kick it towards it. Um, there is a, you know, sort of runoff area to the left, but uh, then all of a sudden you're in the sand. So keep the ball slightly right of center.
That's that sneaky dis-